Hello, hello, hello. My name is Sydney Kouye and welcome to another episode of Sydney's On The Clock. Filming at none other than Old School Barbecue 10655 Corsi Boulevard. So today is a special episode for me because this is a topic or a sport I haven't necessarily covered yet. And if you remember, if you paid attention, if you went back to Clarence's old show when I, when I was with Clarence Bug show, we had specifically talked about how one thing I was going to cover on Sydney's on the clock was going to be track and field. So here on the side of me, I have Mr. Arthur Price, who is a professional hurdler here. And Arthur, just, you know, it's your first time on the show. So just give the audience a little background of who you are, what you do, and what we're to see to you in the next coming years. Gotcha. So um, as uh, Ms. Kouye uh, introduced, uh, my name is Arthur Price. Uh, I Currently, I am a professional uh, track and field athlete. I specialize in the once in hurdles. I do dabble in other events um, if, uh, it, if it allows, but generally the uh, once in hurdles is uh, my thing. Um, I am a graduate from uh, Louisiana State University, so go Tigers. <laughs> um, and uh, just on my off time, usually I might write a book or two. I'm also a published author as well of two, um, two uh, memoirs. And I actually just uh, completed my master's degree. So Really? Congratulations. Yes. So, That's great. What did yeah. you get your master's in? Uh, psychology. Psychology. Yes. So are we to see, you know, a sports therapist or any of the sort in um, the future? Possibly, possibly. You know, I've kind of dabbled with that idea as well. I think, you know, sports and psych, uh, psychology definitely has this has its uh, needs and everything. But yeah, it's a um, very interesting uh, kind of pathway I've kind of taken thus far. But yeah, it's, um, you know, it's rewarding. It definitely is a lot of different things, but I'm very excited. And I think it's good to have different things because, you know, it makes you uh, more active, so. Of course, so let's dive straight into it, right? <clears throat> so Arthur, you started, or you currently are a hurdler and you've yes. been a hurdler. So what was your first introduction into the sports realm, specifically running track and field? So ironically, my first kind of, um, dabble if you will in track and field was actually through football um it was after my f first yeah first seat well first season um well sophomore we'll just simplify sophomore year and um you know i was getting ready for football my junior year of football and in this process kind of towards the uh, spring my football coach was like no, go uh, go run track. Don't come back to football until you try track. So you were and one so, of those people that did the crossover for whenever if football was out of season, you went over, you started going to track practices yeah, and you ran track. But the only difference was I was actually forced to do it okay. this time. So, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I'm, I'm happy. And honestly, like my coach at the time, and he was a defensive coordinator too, and I think he probably saw something that I didn't see at the time. And so very first practice, um, my um, high school coach, Coach Pete Boudreau, he had me walking over hurdles, and that was pretty much uh, – it's pretty much a done deal at that point, so. So, you initially, whenever I was looking into you, right, obviously, because you're an athlete, you know, you have stats and everything on your bio, you started running at University of Louisiana Lafayette. Correct. So, what was the transition from you running for UL in a Sunbelt Conference going into LSU, who is now an SCC? Like, how did that transition even start? So... Immediately growing up, I had the dreams, and I think most uh, kids that play football down here have the dream of going to LSU and playing football. I think of that's course. pretty generic, you know. And um, whenever I was going through the process of track and field, there were a lot of different schools, none of them LSU, ironically, that uh, were recruiting me and offering me a scholarship. And so around this time, my mother actually was diagnosed with dementia. And um, because of her illness and just also being a hometown kid, I kind of already knew that wherever I might go for like a year or so, I'd probably end up coming back. And, you know, when ULL gave me the, uh, the scholarship, I was like, OK, this is better than the Oklahoma State scholarship, the Nebraska scholarship, because I can still be somewhat in Louisiana and still, you know, make that hour 30 drive if necessary. And so my first uh, my first uh, year or rather semester at ULL, I kind of decided early on, like, this probably isn't going to work. But so you, it was the program specifically or was it the coaches or was it actually the academia that went into it? Well, I will say this, like, the academia part of it definitely was not an issue. Um, ULL definitely has their amazing program, um, especially on the track and field side. I, I don't think it was necessarily the program. I just think it was one of those things where it just – it just wasn't a great match, you know, where your heart is somewhere else and the program is probably not where your heart is and everything. So I think um, just that adjustment definitely was made for um, the positive. But that's not saying it didn't come without its negative uh, right. negative things. I had former teammates um, who weren't really supportive of the decision. Mm -hmm. um, 
then I had uh, family and everything along those lines too. So it definitely was you kind of like got to go with your own gut. But um, I'm happy it worked out, you know. Well, that's good. But just stay tuned. We will be gotcha. back with Sydney's on the clock right after commercial break. Gotcha. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. Very few vehicles develop a community of ownership like the Mazda Miata. But why? Well, maybe it's because Mazda's been building the Roadster for over 25 years and there's never been a bad one. Or maybe it's because the Mazda Miata has been universally praised since its inception as one of the most fun cars to drive for the money. If you're looking for fun, affordability, and reliability, come see our Mazda Miata selection today and experience for yourself why Miata is always the answer. At Baton Rouge's Mazda dealer, Team Mazda on Airline. You can't smell it, but you can almost taste it. And whether it's for a family get-together or a game day feast, having red in the mix always sounds good. For three generations, their quality meats and original seasonings have made Manda a Louisiana legend and made their family sausage Louisiana's family sausage. Manda Fine Meats. The flavor says it all. I'm Gary Rasponi. I'm running for lieutenant governor in the state of Louisiana. Why do I think I can do a good job? Or even better than the current lieutenant governor? Because I've covered more of the state in 20 years. Y'all either see me in a boat, in a duck blind, at a festival. If you want to find out more about me and what I've done all my life, look me up, GaryRespondent.com. Hello, I am Sydney Kuye, also known as the Sports Journalist, and we are back with Sydney's On The Clock. So on the side of me, I have professional hurler Arthur Price, and if you stay, stay tuned for the first segment, we talked a little about who he was, his transition into track. But right now, so Arthur. Yes. You start, like I said, we started at UAL, you ended at Louisiana State University. Correct. And we all know that Louisiana State University, or just athletics in general, is an absolute powerhouse. Yep. But a lot of people may not know for track, it has been one of the most consistent in terms of actually dominating the sport. So LSU has six NCAA national titles, two indoor and four outdoor. And you were actually a part of some of this magic that made the team. <laughs> so can you tell the audience just a little bit about what was it like being a part of a national championship team? Oh, yeah, it, it definitely was um, honestly a dream come true, especially considering just kind of the humble beginnings that I had. I would have never imagined that, you know, still to this day, I can just look up and it's, oh, yeah, it's a national championship ring. And I, th I think that's something that a lot of people, you know, dream about when you do enter in um, that sports realm, especially at a, you know, D1 Power 5 school. But just being able to just see it physically is just like, yeah, like that actually happened. And mm -hmm. it's surreal. It really is an amazing feeling. So going back in your tenure at LSU, what was probably the best season you had in terms of races, overall team chemistry, and just the memories looking back? Definitely. The, the 2019 season I think that was a very impactful season for me not just as an athlete but as a person there was again just a lot of things I had to overcome and just going into that season my mindset was different I wanted to stand out I wanted to be the guy not necessarily just kind of like fill in the role and kind of um, you know play back up kind of like what I did my first year on the team mm -hmm. and yeah the rest was history and I think just even that season alone just really has defined me as a person as far as like knowing that yes if I work hard if I do this if I do that I can overcome the adversity and just 
you know, have success. So I, I'm blessed for it. And that was the year, it was 2019, whenever LSU won the SEC championship, correct? Correct. So how was that going forward in terms of, because you won the SEC championship, but that year you didn't, like the team didn't win the national championship. So how was the contrast between there from one conference championship two years later to end up being a national champion? Oh, it was huge. I think it was huge, not just for the program, just uh, overall confidence, but I think a lot of those guys that were from the 2019 season that trickled um, into the 2021 championship, I think that was a really great moment for us all. And yeah, it was just such a, um, it was disappointing not uh, kind of going through and winning nationals in 2019. I remember everyone was very upset and we had the unfortunate uh, injuries and everything along those right. lines but coming back and winning in 2021 was definitely something major so of course you were part of the 2019 year and 2019 you was basically i'm not gonna say the start but that was the year which a lot of track athletes now ended up going pro the ones that we see are just legends in the making you have yeah. your Shakari Richardson's, you have your Mondo Duplantis, who's literally the best pole vaulter to ever walk the race of Earth. <laughs> yeah. So how was it competing on a team with people like that? Oh, it was definitely, uh, it was motivating. You see what they uh, come in and the work ethic they bring, um, mentality as well. It's just, it's very, when people say people are built different, I can confirm that, especially in sports and especially uh, with Mondo. You see what he does and even now you see what he does. It's amazing. You honestly get motivated to the point to where you're like, yeah, I want to kind of not necessarily mimic that, but you, know, you see what they do you want to come in with the same mentality and yeah you just kind of got to go with it so <laughs> and not to count you out but whenever we were talking previously before the show has started you were telling me how you were getting ready you know the olympics <laughs> is next year so where where are we to see you in the next couple of years yeah so hopefully um well i am just coming off of surgery um with the rehab process not necessarily grueling but definitely has been very rewarding i do feel a lot stronger and i'm very excited getting back to some old things i kind of strayed away from and yeah just the olympics this year and then the you know, next Olympics in four years, definitely something that I think a lot of people are looking forward to. But I think personally for me, it's going to be the culmination of um, just a personal journey. So I'm very excited. Hopefully I can get the job done. I'm very um, looking forward to it. And um, yeah, we'll see. And how rigorous has your training been getting ready for these milestones? Oh, it's it's been... I honestly think I've been harder on myself this year than I have any other year. Really? And yeah. It's, um, and, you know, you do it for so long. You try to be a student of the game. You're always learning different things. But definitely this year, just being harder on myself, challenging myself. And it's, it's proven uh, to work. So we're going to keep that trend. And uh, like I said, hopefully we get the job done. <laughs> well, y'all, that is not it with Sydney's On The Clock. We will be talking about next, going into a little bit more about Arthur and LSU. Please stay tuned as we come back for off commercial break. Every great story starts with the rush of thrilling gaming action. Handcrafted flavors, eager to please. Getaways for some well-deserved me time. And rewards worth bragging about. If it's a story worth telling, it starts at La Berge Baton Rouge. What's your story? Get huge savings all summer long with the Buy Here, Sell Here program at the Team Automotive Group. Sell your vehicle to us and we'll pay you top value. Or buy here and get a 90-day warranty on the purchase of a pre-owned vehicle. Get Team VIP service at every location of the Team Automotive Group. Few things in life are as valuable as family and peace of mind, especially when it comes to your final arrangements. And that's where Lee Serio can help. His prepaid funeral plans make sure your life will be remembered exactly the way you want it to. With Lee Serio, no detail is too large or too small. Call Lee or his wife Gretchen at 225-315-6329. Let Lee Serio give you and your family the peace of mind you all deserve. Visit Treads and Care Tire Company's new location on Hooper Road in Central. Locally owned for over 50 years, Treads and Care is known for quality automotive repair and top-notch customer service. I'd like to invite you to come out and see us at our new location in Central. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling
It is Sydney Kuye here back with Sydney's on the clock with professional hurdler, Mr. Arthur Price. So Arthur, since you ran under two programs and you ran under two head coaches, what was it like running under Dennis, or at least the legendary Dennis Shaver? And especially now, what was the difference in coaching style that allowed him to build a legacy at LSU that he has now? So it's interesting that I get, I get that question a lot. I would say the overarching thing would definitely be preparation. How we approach every single meet, how we approach every single practice, weight room, everything, you honestly understand the mindset behind it. And not a lot of people actually understand it if they were to you know kind of see our workouts or try to mimic it coach shaver really goes in detail specifically with what it's trying to accomplish and mm -hmm. he even said um actually yesterday for our first um world our pro group um just training with them first day he said the only track meets he cares about this year are the olympic trials and the olympic games so he's very he's very detailed he's very cutthroat about what he wants and it's just that that mindset of preparation and getting athletes ready that i think has honestly made him the coach that he is now and just legendary status hall of famer i can't say enough things about him and he deserves it so so what's the difference between working with a collegiate group going into a program pro group because obviously i would think that or at least the normal person would think that the workouts are at least 10 times harder but actually are they a little more lenient in the fact that they don't want to you know continuously have injuries and prolonging your career right so honestly i think the main thing would probably be um if you've done it a long time, and again, like our workouts really don't change because we're under Coach Shaver, so we, we do the same things. It's really just a timing aspect of it. So for example, the collegians are about four weeks in their training program, we just started. you know. So the timing's different. We might do uh, some different things here or there, but I would say um, the main difference is probably just you have to approach every single practice almost like a pseudo track meet because you don't, at the pro level, you don't necessarily get the same amount of opportunities um, to run. You might get like one race, you know, right. every month or so. So to kind of mimic that uh, adrenaline and kind of mimic that aggression, you really do have to approach practice a lot more uh, strategic and kind of like what Coach Shaver um, has ingrained in us, the preparation aspect of it. So. So just to switch gears a little bit, right? Yes. So I know he had mentioned that you played football. Yes. And an unpopular opinion, a lot of people who don't know this. See, I used to run track back in the day, too. So <laughs> I can I, I could vouch for this. Track rivalries are a lot more deep-seated than football rivalries, I could tell you Very that. much so. Especially because track is not a physical sport. But sometimes, especially in terms of relays, it can definitely turn physical. So what were some big rivalries? Because I know, or at least whenever you were running. Because now I see the likes of Houston, who's coached under legendary Carl Lewis. And then you have Texas Tech that's under another legendary coach, Wes Kitley. So what's the differences now from back in the day to now, or at least what you see? Yeah, so um, definitely back in the day whenever I was competing, it was definitely the main three schools, uh, LSU, Texas A&M, and Florida. That, that was, I think, the big three rivalry just across the sports um, in track and field. Now, I would say it's kind of, well, actually, it's probably the same three. Um, you, you can put USC in there, but I think, um, you know, LSU, Texas A&M, Florida, just the fact that these are all SEC teams and we see each other, you know, every single week, well, almost every single week. Right. I think it kind of fuels it. And I know from the LSU perspective, uh, Coach Pat Henry, he was actually the coach at LSU before Coach Shaver took over. Right. So, um, you know. He was there from the 80s to about 2005 whenever he took over, right? Correct, yeah. So, you know, no, no love lost there, but definitely whenever they travel you know to us or we go to there yeah you, you can sense uh you know a little something there so it's yeah so i know you said florida specifically so yes. you and grant holloway i don't know if anybody knows this but grant holloway is another professional athlete and i know y'all definitely cross paths because yeah. i both run the one ten. so how is that compete against him especially seeing him dominate the world stage now oh yeah um just kind of like you know mono shakari seeing them at practice it was motivating it really was um and I mean, even before I made uh, nationals, he literally turned to me and was like, punch your ticket, like I wanna see you there. And just, you know, getting that from a guy like that, knowing that, okay, I might not be specifically at his level, but he still sees like, yeah, this guy can compete. I think it, um, it's a testament to who he is as a person, but also just to who I am as a person of, okay, even the best can acknowledge that, yeah, this guy is, uh, he's something else, so. So a lot of the time, you know, other sports, a lot of time is very competitive, very tense, but with track, you could say it's a lot more friendly. You could actually make personable relationships. Oh yeah, definitely. But again, you know, come uh, come race day, when you get on the line, everything's free game. Oh, of so, course. Yeah, so it really gets exposed by, you know, how aggressive, so. Well, that's great. Stay tuned with Sydney's on the Clock. We'll be here after commercial break.
You can't smell it, but you can almost taste it. And whether it's for a family get-together or a game day feast, having Randa in the mix always sounds good. For three generations, their quality meats and original seasonings have made Manda a Louisiana legend and made their family sausage Louisiana's family sausage. Manda Fine Meats, the flavor says it all. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. I'm Gary Rasponi. I'm running for Lieutenant Governor. What makes me different than the President and Lieutenant Governor? I believe in the divergence. I believe in what all the scientists have proven right now. It's really the only way to save our coastline, save our heritage, save our families, save our homes, save everything and protect us from the hurricanes. Should we save our homes or should we save a few dolphins? Look me up, GaryRespona.com. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr. and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. back to Sydney's on the clock. I am Sydney Kouye, also known as the sports journalist, and I have on the side of me Arthur Price, professional hurdler. So Arthur, yes. back so currently looking at your times right now, in the 60 meter hurdles, your PR is a 781. And your 110 hurdles is a 13.59. And I know, like you said, you're currently working out and trying to pro progress to get to where you want to be. So where do you want to get your times there, especially since we were talking about the world standard and everything before you know the yeah. show started? Yeah, so definitely, um, and it's kind of crazy uh, in track and field, you know, I, a lot of people believe you shouldn't have a set time, a set goal. Um, personally, I don't really agree with that. I like having uh, set goals and times and everything, and I think especially now when you see just how fast people are running, you do have to be realistic with yourself of what you have to run. So personally for me, um, my goal this year is to just go out there and just be better than I was uh, last year and also the following year. But definitely, I would say maybe around 13-0, 13-1. Uh, generally, it's probably what's going to be needed to make the Olympic team. So again, being realistic with myself. But definitely, um, just having that high expectation on myself and um, kind of moving forward and having the motivation, having that goal, I think is very healthy. And uh, yeah, so it should be should be fun. Um, hopefully, you know, hopefully by the graces of God, we get there. But uh, yeah. So. <laughs> so I know earlier, too, because I was literally we had talked about almost every topic before yeah. the show actually started. And being a man running track and field versus being a woman, there's definitely keen differences in terms of the competition. And we were talking about how the women specifically just go getting to the Olympics and the Olympic trials itself, you're going to have to probably run one of the world's best oh, yeah. because the women are loaded. So what are what's the differences between male hurdlers and the woman hurdlers right now? So I think especially in the USA, it's just completely sad. I mean, you have so many uh, women, especially collegians, who just come out and they just are running their tails off. It is impressive what they're doing. Um, I'll say the men's side is probably more of a toss-up. You might have the same three, you know, every every now and then. But definitely on the women's side, 
you're having um, feet, you know, um, ladies like uh, Leah Armstrong. This year was Masai Russell, Collegians. Right, because she yeah. definitely broke the NCAA outdoor record this year. Yeah, and it's, it's insane. And crazily enough, she didn't even, I don't think she won SECs. She didn't. Yeah, so it's, and especially in the SECs, and we kind of talk about it, you, you got to, if you want to make those world teams, you got to be able to compete in the SEC, and you got to win. You can't come second. You have to, you have to win. So, so do you definitely see the SEC as a stepping stone to the next level in terms of with people who are, you know, recruits looking to where they go now? Do you think the SEC is the place to be in terms of, you know? Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. Now, obviously, there are people at different schools who are just, you know, um, diamonds in the rough who probably just kind of need more development, more time. But definitely, um, as far as like the SEC, if you're expecting to uh, come to this conference, you need to be able to compete. And also the expectation is we're not talking about third third place, fourth place. We're talking about winning. Right. So it's it's very competitive, and I think especially um, you know the uh, the ladies that we just named, they have that mentality, and you've seen just in their success alone. So it's 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 crazy. Um, very uh very great to them and a testament to what they do as well. But yeah, it's it's uh, something unique. So what I'm hearing, Paris 24 is going to be something interesting. Oh, it's going to be fast. It's going to be fast. So I'm excited. Do you? You know, of course, we plan on seeing you there. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I might have a little something, so we'll see. <laughs> this has been a wonderful show. I just want to say thank you so much for coming. Little do y'all know, it was such a... <laughs> def How would I even say this? Coming here, being, being able to get him on the show was such a process. Literally, I had to take a last-minute trip to D.C. Then you actually ended up getting sick with COVID, too. So there was just a lot yeah. going on. It was never set tone it was always look multiple phone calls back to back to back but i'm so glad that i'm actually able to have you here i'm glad that you're actually be able to reach an audience and not just that but help track and field potentially get to the like the audience and get to the pedestal that it needs to be because track and field is really a wonderful sport that's not able oh, yeah. to get the recollection that it does so thank you again for being able to have you on the show this has been sydney kuyate with professional hurdler arthur price with sydney's on the clock and we will see you next episode